All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined all the way from London in the UK by Mr. Tom Rippon. How are you doing, Tom? I'm very well, John. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah. And Tom is the CEO and founder of On Purpose that develops leaders who will help transform the economy uh, after Tom spent uh, a career at the intersection of private, public and nonprofit sectors, exploring how we can bring about a better economy. And what we're going to talk about today is self-actualization is not the answer to fulfillment. It's self-transcendence that businesses and individuals should aim for. So, um, uh, Tom, maybe we just uh, bottom line this to begin with and just kind of define what is the difference between self-actualization and self-transcendence? Sure, yes. Um, two, two big and slightly technical words, so apologies for that. But self-actualization um, is probably best known through the works of Abraham Maslow. Um, mm -hmm. You may have heard of the kind of pyramid of, yeah. of needs. Uh, and self-actualization being traditionally put at the top of that. So that's about, you know, people will describe that as becoming your, your best self, fulfilling your potential, uh, those kind of expressions. Uh, Self-transcendence, on the other hand, literally means, uh, you know, if you take it from the Latin, going beyond yourself. Uh, and, and so that's really about having, uh, not really focusing on yourself and, and trying to become your own best self, fulfilling yourself, but rather focusing on something that is beyond yourself on a bigger cause. It might be a relationship. It might be another person. But that focus is is turned outwards rather than on yourself. Uh, um, no, it's, it's interesting because we definitely um, live in a society today uh, um, with all the, you know, we've been through COVID, we've got social media, we've got all of those things where it seems that I wouldn't say self-actualization, but maybe self-consumption, <laughs> consumed with oneself. But the, it, it's all become very much about me, 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 rather than kind of moving beyond yourself. So what you're talking about is, is almost going counterculture today, isn't it? It is, yeah. And the and the the really interesting thing is actually that uh, Vic, Victor Frankl, who kind of mm -hmm. I, I take my cue on the, on the self transcendence front. He was a survivor of the concentration camps and an Austrian psychiatrist, and um, he uh, you know states actually very categorical categorically that uh, if you try and self actualize, if that is what you focus on, uh, if you try and let, let's say it a bit more colloquially, make yourself happy. Ironically, mm. you're going to fail. Um, ironically, the, the way to having a fulfilled life, uh, and by implication, hopefully maybe a happy or at least a meaningful life, is actually to focus on something that is greater than yourself, that is beyond yourself. And strangely, the fulfillment might then actually hopefully come as a byproduct of that. So it's a kind of, it's a, it's a strange loop where, where you say, well, actually, if you try to go directly at something uh, and if you try and aim for self-actualization, ironically, you will probably fail. The me, me, me thing mm -hmm. actually probably won't work. Uh, and, you know, a kind of a better way to go about it is to forget about that for a minute. Uh, think about, you know, what can I contribute to the wider picture? Uh, and indirectly, uh, then fulfillment uh, will hopefully come out of that. Yeah, that's uh, the interesting. Uh, what you just say there is about that the uh, the self fulfillment comes out of actually getting out of your own way and focusing uh, on on something greater than you. Yeah, definitely, and and you know, and I think that applies both to individuals, and that mm -hmm. was obviously what Viktor Frankl was mainly focused on as a psychiatrist. But I I believe strongly that it's the same for for organisations and businesses as well. Uh, you know, we we've had a uh, a culture of it's almost the kind of me 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 culture the equivalent isn't it in, in the organizational mm -hmm. world where it's all about okay how do i become number one how do i grow how do i maximize my profits what's my margin uh and too often i think you know the question is not asked well what is it that i am actually contributing to the wider world and you know, how am i making the world a better place uh and yet actually that is i think where truly successful businesses start you know, they, they don't start with the kind of dilemma of, okay, how am I 
just going to make as much money as I can. Mm -hmm. If you go back to the founding stories of, of, of many great um, and these days also big businesses, you know, they started with some kind of real life problems that they were trying to help solve uh, and help right. solve in a commercially viable way. Yeah. Um, so, so from a beer, yeah, from, from a business point of view, particularly, right? Um, I think that you know it's now coming to obviously purpose is uh, is being thrown around a lot, and I feel like to some degree uh, it's become a bit of a bumper sticker for some organizations where it's great to talk about it, but it doesn't actually it doesn't have any real like meaning behind it or the company isn't really kind of coalesced around it. So to your point, it's, it's, it's important if you're going to figure out what the purpose of your company is and therefore, you know, you can sort of align to the greater good. You have to, you have to really be authentic about it, right? You have to find that real purpose, the one that, that you really, really are passionate about rather than just kind of come up with something because otherwise it's not going to, it's not going to work. Yeah, I agree. You know, purpose washing is, is a big issue these days. And, uh, you know, I I often say, I, I think purpose gets misunderstood often, you mm -hmm. know. And, and uh, for example, I, I often kind of hear people talking about making the business case for purpose. Well, you know, if you take a minute <laughs> to think about that, that, that's an oxymoron. That doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to make a business case for purpose, you, you actually are saying, my, my purpose is really making money because the business mm -hmm. case is what I'm interested in and, and purpose is just a tool. It's just a means to get there. The whole point of purpose, of course, is that it is not the means. The purpose is the end. So, you know, you need to start with the end. You know, what is my con contribution to the world? Uh, how do I make the world a better place? However trite that might, that might mm -hmm. sound. And then work backwards from that and be genuine about, okay, I, I need to run a business a little bit around this as well. I, I need to make, make, make that happen in a financially viable way. But the, the main focus is, is my purpose. My purpose is not just a tool to allow me to have slightly happier employees or people who don't turn over quite as much or have more loyal customers or you know some other kind of uh, leverage point that's going to allow me to increase my margin. So, how do you, uh, especially with an organization, you figure your 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 purpose? How do you get everybody to, you know, really coalesce and understand it, and and, and you know, and then decide if that's something they want to be a part of? Because I think that's important too. Is that if your organization's purpose is X and it's like well defined, you obviously have to ask yourself: Is that something that I can be passionate about? Is that something that I can uh, I can like latch on to? Yeah, and and you know, uncovering that or discovering that is is uh, is can can be a kind of you know not not a short process, should we say? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, a lot of people talk these days about the fact that organizational purpose emerges from the organization, by which they mean you know that it kind of comes through conversations that we have with colleagues. Uh, you know, it's not something that, for example, is simply set at the top and then just kind of mm -hmm. scaled down um, scale down through the through the organization um there does need to be that kind of authentic buy-in and uh that engagement of people and um, however having said that um i am also of the opinion that sometimes it's a bit easy to say well it'll just emerge you know we'll all just have lots mm -hmm. of conversations yeah. and something will transpire I, I i do think there is a place for guiding that conversation a little bit uh, and and for setting out some inspiration or vision for it, and then of course, you know, letting people participate in, in defining and shaping that. But it's it's you know it's a it's a balance between those two things. I think. No, I, I agree because I think if you let it happen organically, it's like culture. Your company cultures. I mean, a lot of company cultures just happen organically, and when they happen organically, they just tend to be a reflection of the leadership, right? And it's the same thing if you just did purpose happens organically it's probably going to be a reflection of the ideas of a small amount of people at the top uh, unless you actually put a process in place to really engage people yeah i think that's true you need to engage them and and it's also not just a one off process mm -hmm. you know it's not a kind of a one off engagement where we where we all come up with our purpose statement and then then that's fine it, it then has to be lived on an ongoing basis and it has to affect the decisions you take the decisions everyone takes, you know, how, how you run your organization, um, you know, 
what products you create, what your core business is, how how you go about making those things happen. And that's where, of course, you know, if it's if it's not authentic, if it's not lived on an ongoing basis, uh, you know, people see through that very quickly, be they employees, colleagues, uh, customers, uh, or, or other stakeholders. Yeah, no, I always love, because I always loved using the customer centric thing, you know, where companies put customer centric on their websites and they say, we love customers and we're all about our customers. And then you try to contact them and uh, you spend three days trying to get through to a human and you go, no, you're not. And I think it's the same thing with with purpose, as I said earlier. I mean, it's it's because it's a it's a buzzword right now. And I think there's a danger that some companies are, are just slapping a bumper sticker on to say, oh, yeah, you know, we have a purpose. But if you don't, if it's not real and authentic, I mean, the people in the organization aren't going to are going to see through it themselves, not only the people outside, but everybody's going to see that that's not really you. Yeah. And, and we've also got to be honest with ourselves. You know, I think we have historically come from a place where businesses especially were expected to have a purpose that was about maximizing their profits. You know, we can't mm -hmm. beat about the bush on that one. That That yeah. is historically where we have come from. You know, I think we are kind of evolving away from that. You know, we've, we've got to a point where the business roundtable, US business roundtable, for example, in 2019 said, well, actually, you can't just do that at all costs as long as it's legal. You know, you do actually have to mm -hmm. kind of take account of your wider stakeholders uh, as well and, and, and make sure that you're running your business in responsible ways. You know, the next step is then that there are... Uh, a bunch of people talking about the fact that this, this contribution to the wider world, you know, that, that businesses are actually mm -hmm. there to solve problems humans have and to solve them profitably, uh, but to solve uh, problems that humans have or that, that the world has. You know, that's kind of, I'd say, step three. Personally, actually, I go a step further and I say, well, I think genuinely true. What well, the issue with step three is if you say, well, you know, we're solving, we're profitably solving problems humans and, and, and the world has, mm -hmm. you know, what happens to those problems that, that can't be solved quite as profitably or that, you know, are not, right. not up to the kind of market benchmark or whatever it might be. So I actually go one step further and say, well, I think you need to be, your purpose needs to be about thinking, how do I contribute to the, the, the communities, the systems, the environment that I am part of? What is my role in making those places better, healthier, uh, you know, more resilient, uh, have greater well-being. So what, what is my contribution to that? And then how do I work backwards and how do I make that into a viable you know, proposition, uh, which you know may be quite profitable, mm -hmm. maybe just about break even, may require some subsidy from the government or maybe some grant funding. I actually don't mind how you deliver it. For me, the important thing is that you are kind of contributing to that wider picture and then make it work financially in whatever way you need to. Uh, so do you have a, do you have any good examples of companies who have if you like almost retrofitted themselves like have gone and gone through the process like figured out a purpose and then kind of reorganized themselves to support it well i mean that's happening in all kinds of places at the moment uh and uh we work, for example, in the UK with uh, one of the very big banks here, NatWest, who have just, you know, a year or two ago announced a, a big new purpose, and they're kind of cascading that through, uh, through, through their, uh, through their business. Uh, we also have uh, connections through one of our alumni to uh, BP, the oil company, which you know mm. you might not think of as being particularly purposeful. Uh, or, or, or I should say, maybe not purposeful, but you know, many people would have qualms about holding them up as a kind of uh, ethical company. But but they have actually articulated a purpose statement. I'm not saying about what they do in reality, but at least the statement sure. I would say uh, is actually quite a, an interesting one and does is in the sense self transcendent that they talk about helping the world by 2050 get to net zero. You know, they're not talking about. Mm -hmm. ourselves getting to net zero just as bp which actually right. as an oil company i think we all said hey as an oil company saying we're going to get to net zero by 2050 we'd all say that's you know that's not bad that's quite impressive right but they've actually gone a step further and they've said we're going to help the world get to net zero and that's i think a classic example now again i'm not saying bp mm -hmm. in all its operations actually conforms to that they do some some stuff that i wish they wouldn't do and so on but at least the aspiration in that particular phrase, I think, is really interesting. Uh, you know, and they are 
trying to also cascade that through the organization. It's a huge organization. It's difficult to make change happen. But you know, to maybe give you a very different example of of a, of a much smaller organization, but you know, also has a uh, maybe this one is not so much a retrofitted mm -hmm. purpose. It's one they had from the beginning. But there is a fantastic kind of high end furniture design company called Vitsu, uh, originally from Germany, now headquartered in the UK, and they talk about uh, their purpose being helping more people lead better lives with less stuff for longer. Um, you know, they, they sell you designer shelves, uh, chair, office chairs, tables, right. and um, they go to great lengths to make sure that uh, you buy what you need, but as little as necessary from them. Mm -hmm. And they go to great lengths to make sure that you never have to replace that. Or if, if something does break, that you can replace the smallest necessary part. Uh, that you know, they don't incentivize their salespeople to just sell you as much as possible. So it's almost the inverse of kind of yeah. you know <laughs> what businesses usually do in terms of trying to try and incentivize repeat sales, trying to make their products almost addictive and all the rest of it. Because you know, this company has realized that part of their contribution is to make really high quality, long lasting stuff, and that's part of their contribution to making sure that environmentally speaking, we we might be able to get to a kind of better place. Uh, yeah. and, and that's again just uh, that's a kind of it's a different approach. It's a different mindset. It's a different set of beliefs that you that you rooted your business in, and that's where you see it be, being really authentic, and where you know it, it touches everything in that business from how they make their products to how they sell their products to the pricing, you know, and so on and so forth. Yeah, no, I love I love that. That, that that's a great example. Downselling, you know, we're talking about upselling. Now we're downselling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, no, really. But an interesting part of that, though, is if you th if you think about it, that's trying to move away from the disposable economy back to kind of where things used to be. I mean, once upon a time, you know, goods and products, you expected a light, you know, them to have a longevity to them, a quality and and you save up to buy them because you knew you would have them for a long period of time. Then that kind of went to, away with the disposable economy. Now we're we're, we're coming back. To, to and it seems like to a far better place, but it, it it's a really interesting way to go about because naturally that's where we came from, isn't it? it? It is, yes. And you've got to ask yourself in a way, why did we deviate from that for a yeah. period of time? You know, and, and of course, a lot of that answer is in that idea of me as a company. If I'm trying to maximize my sales, if I'm trying to get as much you know repeat business as possible, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, if I'm focused on myself and me growing and me becoming more profitable, if I'm trying to self-actualizing, that's the kind of stuff that I will do. But that is, you know, in this case, then to the detriment of, you know, uh, the environment or the, the wider world. Uh, and, you know, therefore coming back to just being very conscious about what is that impact on the wider world that I have? Can I sell my products in a way that, that uh, also, you know, allows... The environment to flourish or, or whatever it might be um that and that kind of self-transcendent uh, idea you know is is critically important and i think is only going to become more and more important uh, from here on in yeah because uh, just one last point because i i do think that uh for some reason i, I don't this is a strange human psychology thing but uh you know, we're, we're we're all consumers and in our in our personal lives you know we have all of these ideas maybe purpose things that we're really interested in but often happens we cross the threshold of our business whether physically or virtually and then we become something else and we suddenly forget about all of we forget about people at the other end we forget about people as customers we forget that we're even customers how we would even like to interact so it's a it's a i think what you're talking about now is more and more kind of bringing ourselves into the organization and being our true selves as opposed to taking on some strange persona that we feel we should yes and you know you, you know like you say it's almost like we kind of check check our humanity at the door to the office <laughs> and sometimes it feels like maybe we check our common sense at the door yeah, to the office yeah. as well i mean you know uh, uh, Hundred years ago, you just said to someone, "Well, you know, we, we build in obsolescence to stuff." They'd have kind of looked at you in a strange way and said, "Well, why on earth would you do that?" You know, but right, but we, we we've got ourselves into some of these kind of incentives and these kind of feedback loops where somehow that is 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 seen to be normal or or, or gets rationalised. But if you take a step back 
and and yeah, and look at it as a human being, uh, as a human being that's part of a wider that's part of a society and the wider world that you know we all depend on and we need to have in the future. You know, sometimes you have to take that step back and go. Actually, that's just all a bit odd. <laughs> what would happen <laughs> if, if what would happen if we ran business in, in what is actually really, let's be honest, maybe more commonsensical uh, and ultimately more more rational way. Yeah, because let's face it, otherwise, um, you know, we spend a lot of our time, as you said, like figuring out how do we make the product that you're very happy with? How do we make you feel that that's no good anymore because we've got a newer version that we've added something that probably doesn't really make that much difference to you? But we're convinced you it does. Exactly. You know, we'll make you unhappy because you'll, you know, you'll think you want the new thing. And then as soon as you get the new thing, we'll try and make you unhappy with that again. <laughs> yes, than, exactly. Yeah. You know, how do we try and you know, make everyone a bit a bit more fulfilled uh, in yeah. a kind of longer term way? Absolutely. Well, listen, Tom, this is great. Thank you so much. Like uh, great, great insights. Uh, all of Tom's information will be below the video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, as you mentioned, I run on purpose. Uh, we develop leaders who are going to help transform uh, the economy. Uh, we primarily run a one year full time full time leadership program in London, Paris and Berlin. Uh, for people who have realized that they want to change in career, they want to do something more purposeful, more meaningful. So if you're intrigued by that, head over to onpurpose.org and see how you can get involved. Great. Listen, thanks again, uh, Tom. Thank you for watching and listening. I encourage you to go check it out. The uh, world is changing, and I think you could uh, you do well to get ahead of that change uh, now and understand like how there's lots of different ways to do things today which i think is 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 great and uh so fantastic insights thank you for watching and listening i'll see you all again soon thank you